In a city where death has lost its grip, only the boldest of necromancers thrive. Welcome to Magna Gothica Mailgast, the skirmish war game where every move could be your last or your greatest triumph. Because at the end of the world is a hole, and in that hole is a city, and the city is sliding into hell. All right, folks, buckle up, because today we're diving into Magna Gothica Mail Guest. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it doesn't matter because this game rocks. This is a skirmish war game set in the death-defying heavy metal hellscape. Designed for virtual tabletops mostly, but it can be played uh, classic-wise. This game is brought to you by Tom Bloom. Yeah, uh, the guy behind Lancer and Kill Six Billion Demons. And it was dropped on Halloween for $6.66. How many? Metal is that. To tell you the truth, this one had me hyped, and spoiler alert, it did not disappoint. The book and the price. All right, so let's talk about the goods. The rule book is packed with everything you need to play this game. It has lore, combat rules, factions, and even printable unit cards for those of you not Rock and Roll 20 or Tabletop Simulator on Steam. And the price of this book, like I said, is only $6.66, and that's less than what I pay for my morning caffeine. So honestly, it's a total steal for the complete quality that you're getting here. Art and design. Okay, uh, you all know how much of a sucker I am for good art in a TTRPG, and let me tell you this, that this book is dripping in it. I mean, look at this thing. It's heavy metal as fuck. It's aesthetic, top notch. Every page feels like it belongs on the cover of like a death metal album or in some really cool comic or graphic novel. How is this a TTRPG and why are they not making graphic novels instead? I don't know. The factions, um, also, each one is visually distinct in this book, um, and they're all packed with personality. Um, Carcass looks like they've just walked off of a tactical battlefield, but of course the gore grinders are straight up Mad Max maniacs. Bloom's art and layout are immaculate in this book. Everything is pretty easy to read, although it is a read, and that's why I'm here, believe it or not. And the gothic fonts really tie the whole vibe together. Yeah, the art is amazing in this. The overlying story. All right, let's dive into the lore together. The game set in Anzimizurion. I don't know how to pronounce that. This ancient cursed city where death is broken, indeed. And necromancers from all over come here to duke it out for ultimate power over the city. It's dark, it's twisted, and it's exactly what you want from a setting like this. It's perfect. The world building is fantastic in this. Pulling from classic gothic horror, satanic panic, vibes big time here and cosmic despair it's a perfect playground for like grim gritty skirmishes i mean as a whole and uh it, it doesn't disappoint d rules now this is where things get a little bit spicy and might take a little bit more reading for you but Basically, Mailgast runs on a D6 system that is easy to learn, but deep enough to keep you coming back, all right? Um, you spend a lot of time figuring out all the synergies between you and your units and outmaneuvering your opponent. Um, all these units have different kinds of things that you can do to level up, and it's almost like a roguelite in a sense, which I think is why I love it so much if you have someone to play against. Quick tip, though. This is a quick start tip. Start with a 1v1 duel on like an 8x8 grid. Use the Spite Malice level. It's on page 22. And it's a solid way to learn the ropes without frying your brain, all right? Check that out first. Oh, and there are Soul Mechanics Chef's Kiss. They add a whole layer of strategy here that I really liked. Character Creation. In a sense, this is character creation. You're building your own necromancer. And it is kind of a blast. I mean, you pick from one of the six factions, each with their own style and play mechanics. Um, if you want to be a gun-toting skeleton commander, you can go carcass. Um, if you prefer ripping enemies apart with chainsaw demons, then the gore grinders definitely have you covered here. Um, for new players, my suggestion, another quick start tip. Stick to one faction um, and use the default unit cards to determine your first few games, it will help you learn in the long run. Abilities and actions. 
Abilities are where this game kind of shines. Um, every unit has passive traits and active act abilities, plus necromancers have soul abilities that can completely flip the script during combat. Um, and it really makes for fun times. You never know what you're up against or what you're going to use. It really keeps you on your toes. If you're looking for a game with depth on an 8x8 grid, this game has it. In spades, believe it or not. Combat! Now on to combat, why I know all of you are here. Combat is fast, it's brutal, and it's incredibly satisfying to kill your opponent's units. And the units are pretty squishy. Um, and it matches, you know, they wrap up in about six rounds or so. And I mean, you'll be scrambling to keep your synergies alive as things get dicey pretty fast here on the board. Um, the real fun, though, is watching your perfectly laid plans go out the window as you adapt on the fly. I mean, it's chaotic, which I'm really into. It's intense, and I'm honestly here for it. So the mechanics themselves in combat are fairly simple. Just keep rolling them D6s and take your time. Uh, again, use some default starter stuff if you play your first match. Monsters and items, I guess. Let's talk enemies and gear. Um, from basic thralls to giant tyrants, um, the variety kind of keeps things fresh. Plus, there are like cursed relics um, and other gear to power up your necromancer as you play, which is kind of fun. I do think it could use more variety here in this game. Um, but honestly, what's here works great. I, honestly, I don't know if it needs it because of how fast-paced the game is. Game mastering! So in my reviews, I have these sections that we go through. Um, this one's hard to say game mastering on. Uh, this game is a breeze. There's not a lot of prep. Um, and there is a rule book that'll kind of get you through everything. There are scenarios. So I guess there is kind of like a game mastering element to this that'll keep things interesting. Um, there is a, as a quick starting tip, start with the murder scenario. I think it's on page 23. It's simple, straightforward, and great. It's a great intro into the system. So game mastering in a out of 10, I guess. Conclusion! The matches are quick. They wrap up in under an hour, and the streamlined rules make this one one of the easiest skirmish games to jump right into. If you've never played a skirmish type of TTRPG, this one is really good. It's got beautiful art, it's addicting, it's fast-paced, and it hits all the right notes. Like, for you and a buddy just to crack open some drinks and just play a little skirmish game together, um, especially for those of you who don't like poker but you want to hang out with a friend on a Friday night, you don't know what to do, pick this game up, dude. Six bucks, you, you're there. You're you're instantly there. It's a blast. It's going to also the art. It's going to look amazing sitting on your bookshelf, wherever you put it, no matter what. So, I mean, this is a no brainer. This is a must play for me. Yeah. If you found this overview and quick start helpful, please do make sure to hit the like button. And let me know what you thought. So, Winner's Male Gast Land, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, with an overall score of 8.4, this is a must-play for skirmish fans. It's fun, fast, and it's heavy metal driven. Hell yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're ready to take on the Black City, smash the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments which faction you might be rolling with. Um, and until next time, make sure to keep it metal, guys, and take a seat with me on the couch and roll initiative, my friends. Thanks for watching.